right. Welcome to another uh, edition of Your Business Unleashed, a podcast to help entrepreneurs uh, grow their businesses. And today we're talking specifically to lawyers who own their own law firms. And I've got a special guest, uh, David Crawford, with our indirect tax group to talk about indirect taxes um, for specifically for lawyers. So welcome, David, and thanks for coming on. Great. Thanks for having me. So when we talk about indirect taxes, what are indirect taxes? Can you kind of define that for us? Uh, I like to think of it as anything that's not a direct tax, like income tax. So um, all your sales taxes like GST, HST, Quebec sales tax and provincial sales tax um, that apply, those regimes apply uh, those taxes to legal services um, across the country. Okay. Yeah, got it. So, uh, I mean, the most common one that we're going to be aware of is in Alberta is obviously GST. So, uh, and, but but we're going to get into some of the other ones during this during this chat. Why why do I have you on the call today? Tell me a little bit about your background and why people should listen up when uh, when we got David Crawford chatting about indirect tax. So, t- tell me a bit about uh, your background. Uh, uh, yeah, so I joined joined the firm here as a contractor about a year and a half ago. Uh, happy yep. to be here running, uh, growing my own new practice again from from the ground up uh, after having worked in big four, big six accounting, national accounting firms uh, for quite some time now. And prior to that, I was with the dark side with uh, CRA as a as a large case uh, GST auditor back in the day. That's a long, long, long time ago. Uh, so, yeah, the the involvement or the evolving of provincial sales tax regimes over the years, for instance, is, is probably the biggest one. Uh, in particular, the BC, Manitoba, and Saskatchewan, all tax legal services as they define that. So it's kind of important for law firms that uh, operate just out of Alberta, for instance, that may not have that line of sight to uh, the tax requirements or the sales tax registration and collection requirements in those other PST provinces, plus, you know, uh, the, all the HST rules uh, and potentially Quebec sales tax as well that may affect them. All right. So you and I, we've been working together for, geez, the better part of, it's got to be over 15 years now. And I've always come to you as my indirect tax resource. And I think, you know, it, it's interesting as as you start to work with some of our clients, and we've had a couple surprising conversations where our customers go, uh, wait a minute, uh, Clayton hasn't been dealing with our, you know, or Clayton wasn't aware of these peculiar indirect tax rules. And I go, as with most general practitioners or even uh, tax specialist income tax pr- practitioners, GST is a whole other set of law, right? Like it's it's completely different. Am I right? It's, got its, own, it's got its own book and it's just as thick, if not thicker now than the Income Tax Act. So. Interesting. So am I safe to say that most entrepreneurs who are with most general practitioners there's a chance that their indirect tax issues aren't being properly looked at because this stuff isn't really talked about most of the time amongst sort of general and even tax spec uh, specialist uh, circles. It's sort of sort of shuffled off to the side and hopefully it never comes up. But then when it does, you know, it sort of bites people. Yeah, your average practitioner, in my experience, even at the big firms, I mean, they're very siloed in what they know and and they're really good at that. But, you know, there's some people in, in firms such as ours, they might practice this 5% of the time, right? So they'll never have seen sort of the depth and breadth of all of these taxes and, and how they affect different clients. So um, it's always a surprise to them um, that, you know, say an Alberta That's- law firm might have a Saskatchewan or Manitoba or BC uh, registration and collection requirement on their legal services and, and there's other services that other professional services out there that are taxed as well but interesting so it, 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 did you did you pick that five percent to the time number on purpose five no. <laughs> percent it's not just five percent <laughs> yeah it's not just five percent that's what i've come to realize over the years and so um it, it's interesting that you say that we're all sort of specialized and while income tax is certainly out front most frequently in terms of what accountants do or CPAs do with their customers, uh, GST is there and it's a very serious issue and can uh, make or break your business if things go south. It, it kind of related, you know, we're talking to lawyers today and you kind of relate it to lawyers, right? Lawyers practice in a particular area of law. And so I think probably most lawyers who are listening to this can relate to there's very separate and individual areas of law that we practice. I don't practice in indirect tax law. You do, and you've been there for the better part of 30 years, I think, right? So, All in, yeah. Yeah. 
Right on. Okay, well, let's get into it. So let's talk about, uh, you know, how the place of supply rules uh, work for specifically law firms. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, so the GST, HST, place of supply rules dictate whether, uh, well, all kinds of things, good services and intangibles uh, are taxed at a rate generally where the benefit of the good service or intangible is enjoyed. That's a good rule of thumb. And that's kind of modeled after OECD type um tax regimes for sales tax around the world um so it, to use a really easy example just think of a, a conveyancing in a law firm with real property so let's say you've got an alberta law firm and you've got a client that used to live here but say they moved to ontario and they're buying or selling a cottage down there so you're performing the service here in alberta at your law firm but the real property in question and the person who's enjoying your service or the benefit of it is in Ontario. So by the way, the place of supply rules work from an HST versus GST perspective, you'd be charging or should be charging 13% Ontario HST as an example. And there's a host of other rules in there for other property besides real property, but that's just a, a quick and dirty example. And the same would be true for if you did it in BC, it would only be 5% GST, but then a question would become is, well, do I need to register for BCPST and do do my legal services that I'm providing in respect of, say, a property in BC? Take that same cottage owner, put them in BC, and it's like, all right, well, the subject of the property or the subject of my service of conveyancing the real property or closing a deal is about a BC piece of real property, so it's subject to PST, and do I need to register and charge that to my to my client? Interesting. And you gave two different examples. And I don't know much about indirect tax, but what I do know is that HST, while it's a different rate, mechanically from a compliance perspective, it's fairly simple. It goes on the same return as the normal GST return that you're filing. But when we get into PST provinces, which I, I hope you're going to talk a bit about and we'll get there, um, now I've got to register for a whole new system and remit a whole other tax return, a GST or sorry, PST return, right? And, yes. um, and and the same types of uh, input tax credits that you would get on a GST HST return. That's not maybe not applicable in that jurisdiction. You need to understand the interworkings of all of that. So all of a sudden you go, all I've done is sell something to somebody in BC. I'm in Alberta. Holy smokes, I'm into this whole potentially into this whole world of other compliance issues that I wasn't contemplating. Yeah, and, and in the last several years, all the PST provinces have kind of widened their net. To sort of catch you know companies operating we'll just pick on alberta because um that's where we're sitting um that are selling taxable things to their residents and there's tax leakage because the residents don't just voluntarily pay the tax to the bc government for instance so if you're not charging them bc saying well we're going to make the registration net a lot wider for other companies in canada including companies outside of canada that don't have a place of business in bc as an example and, you know, Manitoba's expanded their registration requirements for all things. Saskatchewan's done that and Quebec has done that too. So if we take our cottage owner, for instance, or let's say have multiple cottage owners, and for whatever reason, you're an Alberta law firm dealing with Quebec law, unlikely to happen. But just as an example, if you're selling $30,000 worth of these legal services to cottage owners in Quebec, um, and they're not, these are individual persons that aren't registered for Quebec sales tax, you have to register for Quebec sales tax as an Alberta law firm and collect and charge that tax after you hit $30,000 in Quebec sales to those types of individuals. So that's another example where, again, the net's been cast a lot wider um, and, and it's been cast a lot wider for non-residents of Canada too. And I guess it makes sense because you go, well, I'm a former resident of Alberta and I don't like paying that PST, HST stuff. I, I like to stick with my GST. So wherever possible, I'm just going to source my supplies, whatever they might be, out of Alberta and avoid all this nasty extra tax. Well, that doesn't hang, does it? Because the supplier in a lot of cases, I'm, I'm, I'm generalizing here and I'm sorry because I know that generalizing doesn't work in your field of business. But uh, I'm generalizing here and saying, you know what, there, there could actually, that doesn't necessarily get you out of paying PST or the HST component. Uh, yeah. The federal or the... The, the provincial portion of the HST. Yeah, and I think individual consumers always see it as a tax grab by the government. It's like, well, if you went to a BC law firm that is registered for PST and you got the service done there, would you pay PST? And it's like, yes. And so it's like, 
to stop that tax leakage and I guess the competition, I guess, if you will, if everybody said, oh, I'm not going to use a BC law firm, I'm just going to go to all get my work done uh, in Alberta by a lawyer that's, you know, answered to the bar in BC, for instance, that can practice, you know, BC law in, in Alberta, um, then everybody would do that, right? So to make that tax leakage stop and the same answer is Quebec, et cetera, it's about leveling the playing field. And it's not a lot different than what's called, or they call it the Netflix tax, but when the federal government came uh, July 2021 and they said, you know, all non-residents of Canada, if you're doing this, this, and this, and you're making $30,000 in sales to these people, we want you to register. Because if it's coming in over the airwaves, the internet, et cetera, um, and it's being, you know, a remote service, but you're enjoying that in Canada, um, there should be tax on it. So from a, I guess, a communications perspective and whatever. So Netflix, for instance, um, before these rules came in, they could just cast their signal into Canada and nobody would pay GST on it. But if they were watching that on Shaw, that same movie or streaming service or whatever, they would pay GST or HST or whatever. And so it was a bit of a competitive thing, right? So would I pay for no GST if I'm sitting in Quebec and no QST from Netflix? But if I go through Videotron, I got to pay them both. So Videotron saying, well, there's a 15 point advantage to to non yeah. non residents that you know aren't caught by these rules. So that's just an example of the widening of the net and, and about where consumption takes place and where the tax should occur. You know, I could see uh, a lot of a lot of lawyers getting tripped up by this because. Um, you know, maybe they don't have a robust internal finance department like, uh, you know, like some of the bigger law firms do. Right. And and uh, and and you're and, and they're they've got their B.C. bar and they're able to practice for B.C. customers uh, or provide services to B.C. customers and, and their finance department might not be picking this up. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, you could be running amok of some PST rules. And so. OK, so we've addressed the the general place of supply rules, which is forgive me for paraphrasing, but wherever the, the service is being enjoyed or consumed, you know, you, you need to consider in that jurisdiction whether or not you've got a, 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 a registration obligation beyond basic GST and or a collection obligation uh, for the provincial component of the, of the HST. So where is it being consumed? So that's the place of supply stuff. But then the Indirect Tax Act, and I, and I really don't like it because there's not a lot of logic to the Indirect Tax Act from where I'm sitting as an income tax guy. I like to tie it back to some logic. And when you get into the reason that your, your act is so big is because there's so many service level peculiarities or product level peculiarities that apply and they're different for every jurisdiction. And I think the same is true even in law, right? Where certain services attract in certain jurisdictions, other ones don't, and they might in one jurisdiction and they don't in another jurisdiction. Can you talk about that a little bit or give give some examples of common uh, services that might apply or might not apply? Uh, you know, speak on that a little bit. Let's start out with what are the PST provinces? Let's start oh, there. Yeah, let's do that. So British Columbia to our west, Saskatchewan to our east, and Manitoba further east, right? And some people refer to Quebec as a provincial sales it. tax province, but it's not. Technically, it's it's, it's more GST. like a value-added scheme like GST and HST, right? Got it. Okay, so, yeah. so BC, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Quebec is really what we're talking about. We'll Everywhere it, yeah. else that isn't Alberta is HST. But the but the rates yep. vary where it's yeah hard. so okay. basically Good, you think excluding Quebec just take Ontario to the Atlantic is all HST at a, a different rates so the Maritimes are all fifteen Ontario's thirteen and Quebec's you know effectively fifteen percent if you include GST in there territories all five percent five percent no PST HST five percent GST technically yeah. got it okay yeah. so talk about from a if I'm a law firm owner and I'm providing services into these different jurisdictions, what type of things it, that I sell are are going to be exempt or eligible or or whatever you call it? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so like I said, each each of those provinces. Well, let's start with Quebec because that's easy. It's going to be like GST or HST. Pretty much everything subject to tax. There's really no exemptions per se, unless or there's maybe relief of tax if you're providing a, a legal service to, a, say, a First Nation individual or a band or corporation, uh, First Nation corporation situated on a reserve, right? So they don't pay tax on those types of services. 
Um, and then from uh, Manitoba PST, they specifically define what is and what isn't a legal service. And, and each province sort of has, they follow the Legal Professions Act in their province to say, you know, if it's in this act and it's defined there, then we tax it. If it's not, then we don't, right? And Saskatchewan, basically the same thing, BC, the same thing. But the same concept applies is, is if the individual or the object of the service, say, such as real property or uh, whatever, it could be like a, a employment matter in BC for a BC employee or in the, in their employer. It's about where that benefit is enjoyed generally or where the object of the service is located. Okay. So I'm not there, going to so, the ins and outs, but each province sort of defines them differently. Right, right. Okay, because we, we did come across, like even we deal with a lot of lawyers and uh, we've smartened up and started just putting you in front of them right at the start of our relationship and see who's practicing extra provincially because it's just a good idea. But we have come across certain scenarios where, um, you know, they were selling exempt services for the purposes of PST. But I think in that case, it related to First Nations work um, or or something like that. And I guess the point is, is uh, not all legal services uh, are caught and but a lot are. And uh, it, it's it's not a simple. Can you Google this stuff? Like, is it easy to find? Uh, yeah, each of the provinces has publications on it. Uh, which generally reflect the law, but not necessarily. Um, is the language simple, or do we need do we need uh, to? Is there an act of definitions to understand the language on the website? Yeah, everything on the publications is kind of plain language, and and generally it references back to specific legal definitions in those acts. Um, you know, I'd say probably, I'd say BC does the best job of publications, and then maybe Manitoba second. And then Saskatchewan yeah. third, but they're all pretty good. They've got, you know, publications for kind of every industry, right? So, right. Are there any big opportunities for recoveries that you've seen in this area? Um, recoveries meaning that they've overpaid or overcharged their customers, perhaps. It's usually a risk based yeah. issue where they haven't and should have or yeah. should have been registered and haven't collected the tax. Um, okay. If you're doing business for companies, you may be able to recover it later on if you get caught and assessed. If you're dealing yep. with general individuals, like somebody buying a cottage and you didn't change, you might not ever recover that, right? Uh, they might tell sure, you. Sorry. I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it would be more for uh, non-Alberta companies who uh, have charged an Alberta client or charged into a different jurisdiction at, or at their own rate where they could have been taking, they could have been charging at a lower rate, for example. But I guess once you've charged your customer, there's no getting it back, right? Yeah, you raise a good question there. Is so, and there's a lot of Calgarians that own BC properties, right? So you've got that uh, Alberta law firm and just say they use the billing addresses where the person lives, say, 10 months out of the years in Calgary, but the object of the service related to their property in BC, and it could be a statement of claim on an insurance policy, it could be whatever. And they would just say, well, a person's sitting in Calgary, but the property's in BC, and you just charge them 5%, but let's say you're supposed to be registered for BC PST, well, then you should have charged an additional 7% as well for the BC PST. Okay, well, I mean, I think this is about as simple as we can make this issue, this very, very complex issue with uh, with uh, very peculiar issues in each province. What do we do if we want to reach out to you? Like, what would be your approach if I was a law firm owner and I heard this podcast and I went, you know, we might have some issues here. What would be my next steps? Uh, depends on the issue. Uh, if you're not selling, if you're not supplying legal services to customers or objects of the service being in a PST province, you really just got to figure out how, you know, how your billing system or how your people are operating the billing system is figuring out the place to supply of GST province versus an HST province, right? And and right. particularly Quebec, right? Uh, where, you know, where you're selling to individuals in particular for Quebec. Uh, and then from a PST perspective, it's like, okay, well, do I need to register? Because chances are what you're supplying is taxable, then the question becomes is, and, and it relates to something in BC, is do do these rules catch me and force me to register? Right? So that's the that's the question. Is it's likely taxable? And then your next question is, do I have to register? Okay, so 
I'm not equipped to answer those questions as a law firm owner, and I don't have time because I'm busy servicing my clients. Do you do a quick look under the hood, or or what do you offer? In yeah, that regard? We, we can do, you know, even just a half hour consult just to kind of have a quick look under the hood and find out how you run your business and whether some of these um, exceptions or sorry, what some of these rules might catch you in A, is it a taxable thing that you're providing? Um, and B, if it is, do you need to register? Good. So, yeah, we All can right. Well, I think, uh, is there anything else that I've missed here? Um, yeah, it's a complex well, topic, uh, like, you know, because you've got multiple jurisdictions that all have different rules. Um, if in Quebec, for instance, you need to basically find out if you're, and I can see this happening, say, in around the Ottawa Gatineau area where you've got law firms practicing in Ontario that, you know, can do Quebec civil law. And, you know, course. lots of things like cottages. So it's like, all right, well, if you're doing a bunch of work there, well, and then you're over thirty thousand dollars on sales to individual persons, you know, that aren't registered for Quebec sales tax. Then the rules say if you hit that thirty in any twelve month rolling period, you need to register and begin charging tax um, to all your Quebec customers, right? So uh, you need to a know that that person in the property or the issue is in Quebec, and number two is 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 that individual registered for Quebec sales tax? Interesting. So this is kind of a knowledge of knowledge of client thing, right? Like if you mm -hmm. if you it's almost worth if it isn't already in your your knowledge of business checklist when you're doing intake for a new customer, you really got to find this stuff out. Where is the property located? Where are they located primarily or uh, where would they be enjoying the service? So it's almost worth taking a look at the at the KOB checklist that you're doing on the way in for new clients, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess yeah. the question becomes is. Uh, a do I coming back to that? Do I need to register? And then that knowledge of business uh, or knowledge of the subject matter of the service does that relate to a PST promise? Well, if I'm registered, then the chances are is that you know there should be PST applying on that invoice in addition to GST, right? Or, or right HST on. is the case maybe. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you making the time, David. And um, where can where can we get a hold of you uh, if if we have any questions about this stuff? Where can we find you uh, or, or some information relating to it? Yeah, um, visit our website. There's uh, various articles in our blog section, akinhenderson.ca. And uh, there's lots of good articles there, particularly one on this issue. Um, and then otherwise, right. uh, contact me, David at akinhenderson.ca. All right, that's that's it for today. I, uh, I hope you've gained something uh, valuable from this, and we'll look forward to talking to you on the next podcast. Great. Thanks Bye for having for me. Bye for now.